Hello learners, as we were talking about the module of counselling, so now we will be talking about the topic workplace counselling, what are the challenges and the future of this area of counselling. So as we are talking about the constraints, we should know that what are the ethical dilemmas that one face when they are being a counsellor and when there is an organisation who wants to employ a counsellor for catering to different needs of the employees and the organisations. So there are several ethical dilemmas which are being faced by counsellors when they are working in an organisation and issues like confidentiality, issues like loyalty, confidentiality that they should not disclose the secrets which are being told to them in the session, then the loyalty either if it is towards the organization which has employed them or is it towards the clients who have shared the secrets with them. Then incompatibility between what the organization preaches and what it practices and what does the counseling work for. So Lekin in the year 1991, he's a very famous researcher who has enlisted the following ethical questions that are often faced by counsellors when they are being hired by the organisation. So let's just go through those questions to understand that what are the kind of ethical dilemmas one faces when they are working in the area of workplace counselling. So if the management pays, how can the counsellor serve the interest of employees? You see, it is a dilemma. When you are being employed by the organisation, whosoever is paying you, you become bounded towards them. You become bounded with your duties, with your resources towards them. The employees are not paying you. But still the issue, the clause of confidentiality winds you up towards the fact that you cannot share everything with the organisation. So what to share and how much to share becomes the question. And it becomes a dilemma. The next dilemma is, can the targets of the interaction, targets of the interaction means the employees, they share in designing interventions. How much is their feedback, their understanding, their knowledge of the whole situation can be used? Then how can the counsellor honestly describe what is proposed by the organization to those who are to be affected by it. So basically, for example, if an organization change is about to happen, if an organization development is about to take place, if mergers are about to take place, if downsizing is about to happen, for example, so the decisions have been taken by the organization and obviously the impacted ones will be employees. Now, how to disclose this information because it is going to impact their lives personally also, professionally as well. And how to work on it. What can be said regarding confidentiality? As I've just stated a few minutes back, that confidentiality you have towards the employees because they are your clients. But then how are you going to practice it in front of the organization which is paying you to get all those secrets from them? That why are they not performing efficiently? The next dilemma is, can employees refuse to participate in counselling without penalty? Because sometimes in some organisations, in some situations, they are being penalised for this thing, that they are not attending counselling sessions. And the organisation has to be at the cost because they are a part of that dilemma. Right now, how to work on that? Then can the employee confront a manager or supervisor when the counsellor and the employee have worked on this together. So can they actually confront a supervisor and can they tell them that me in my session along with the counsellor have discussed this thing, have finalised this thing, what can I do about it? How can I work on this? Right? And can I really implement it in my work space? And then what safeguards are there for the participants against retaliation from the supervisors or aggravated or aggrieved co-workers for what may take place as a result of counselling. So if they'll be able to understand their strengths, their weaknesses, whatever kind of harassments they have been through or whatever they can do for it, right? This is very, very, very important that they should be made aware that how to put down this thing on the table when you will go back to the workspace you are working with the same people, maybe the same environment that have given you so much stress. What will you do with that and how can you work on it? 
there are some inherent contradictions between the organizations also between the counseling part also and while counseling is more person centric the organization is more work centric right more they focus more on teamwork rather than the individuals and the counseling is on the other hand just focusing on the individuals right so the understanding the viewpoints are very different organizations may require passive workers while counseling always wants the people who are coming to the sessions and when they'll walk out they should be the active ones right so the viewpoint is again very different now organizations are more concerned about production they are more concerned about their funding they are more concerned about their finances but the counselors are more concerned about the problems and the well-being of the employees again a very important fact then such clashes they keep on happening among the values of the business directed organization and a counselors who's more human oriented but this needs to be faced for the good outcome right and it should be negotiated somewhere between the counselors also and through the organizations also because at the end of the day when the employees will be good in a good condition with a good mental health they'll be able to focus better and work better for the organization which ultimately organization wants then a continual dialogue is been going on since the centuries i would say and in this it's all about how can you narrow the gap among the organization among the employees and the counselors as well so that the welfare of both the parties the organizations and the employees it can actually proceed together and now what are the constraints which are stopping us or constraints means the challenges that are being faced right so the biggest bottleneck the biggest issue in employee counseling at the workplace is that there is no trust there is lack of trust on the employees part because employees are not able to trust that if they'll be sharing their deepest secrets their many issues with the counselor then how they can actually believe them that they'll not share it to the organization and how is it going to affect their success rate in the organization as well so the lack of trust is the main thing to believe in the organization or their own superiors if they are internally or externally they are being recruited the establishment of trust is a big challenge and until and unless it is done the sessions cannot proceed further and we cannot go towards a positive outcome the confidentiality that the counselor will not discuss their problems will not discuss their issues to others in the organization so the time the effort and the resources which are required on the part of the organization they are a constraint so as carol in the 1996 points out if the workplace counseling is not introduced and integrated within the organizational culture so it will never be positively accepted by the employees because they have never seen it as a part of culture that the counselor is there who's sitting you can go to them you can book your sessions and you can talk to them about anything related to your work or related to your personal life you can you can get address a few problems if it is not there if they are not in the habit of seeing that then it will somewhere or the other it will always be on the periphery and it will never prove to be that much effective if they will make this as part of the culture then another challenge that we are facing is education and professional setbacks and this i guess specifically comes when it it is it is in india psychology is not a very known very well known field right not many students opt for it right so when uh, it has a global value psychology has a very global value and uh, after covid it has increased only right but when it comes to speaking of india in particular the students of stem stem means science technology engineering mathematics they usually find it easier to source out various study programs as well as they get employment also easily as compared to the students who are coming for psychology or a mental health profession the times are changing again i'm quoting but uh, yes the challenge is still there and it is a challenge for the counselor to maintain that equilibrium how much is how much should be their education how much should be their professional so there is a disequilibrium which can be seen in the market and maybe that is why we do not find very good mental health professionals in a field when it comes to india secondly people are also not accepting they are not very aware about it so yes it does create a problem but the major problem is this also and like like you know as in western countries like us or uk India is yet in the process of accepting that what is counseling all about how it is important and why psychological health along with the physical health is 
important and how psychological health and physical health they both are dependent on each other right so that is why the issues are still we can see right so this in turn puts additional pressure of seeking international exposure and those facing financial setbacks or having monetary concerns they often end up changing their line of study and choice of career because of this so there are people who are pursuing their graduation or maybe post graduation and then they walk out of the field right the good ones also walk out of the field the ones who have completed the study they're not very much professionally trained the ones who are trained they're not able to cater to a popular target population who are looking for them so a lot of gaps are there which needs to be bridged then uh, another challenge is knowing your boundaries so at times it is likely for a counselor to be faced with situations wherein they may wish to go out of their way and provide a person with a concrete answer but we cannot do it it is ethically incorrect so that is why it's a challenge we should know your problems by virtue of humanity as it is being practiced in indian culture we are we belong to a collectivistic society we are very much concerned with our family with our extended family our neighborhood our society our community and we are always in this process of giving advice maybe we can help someone and make someone's lives better but as a professional as a counselor's code of conduct this is not allowed you cannot you cannot just go outrightly and tell them what is to be done if you are a counselor if your client is seeking from it that is fine but your job is not to show your experience over there your job is to make them more stronger version of themselves counselors should not take the decisions of their lives let them come up with their own ideas and do not give them first hand solutions because it is very subjective in nature your understanding your cultural upbringing obviously somewhere or the other when it comes to collective society is going to stop you but you need to work on this thing and the benefit should be of employees not of you another point is the struggle with diplomacy so yes a diplomatic stand has be, is usually being perceived by the client which is not very right because they are and not very wrong also i guess because they are not very aware that what does a counselor do right so they are not very aware that counselors are not supposed to give you answers to your problems they are there they as a guide to navigate you through the right route and not giving you that much flexibility so that you choose the wrong route right so every counselor at multiple times in their career they are being blamed that they are being very diplomatic they are trying to give the right yes answers and this is not right and especially for people like in india like you know who believe that we can okay we should maybe we can cross the boundaries to help another person right they are also expecting something like this so that is why the perception of the field of counseling becomes very blurry for them okay the counselors are usually assumed to be safe players they're not safe players they're ethical players right they cannot take a side they can only tell you that okay this is your choice this is the this shade this is that shade whichever you choose is right for you so statements like please answer this as a person and not as a counselor please don't be diplomatic please try to give me a proper answers so these are some some of the very common things that usually people hear from the, uh, the counselors usually hear from the clients but they cannot help it because they are bounded by their own responsibilities and their ethics so it may be noted that it is unethical for a counselor to involve their personal biases and opinions they cannot do this they cannot let their biases and opinions affect their affect their clients lives they cannot let it this thing happen in the counseling sessions so seeking approval and validation from one is therefore unfair to them and it may also make them appear very cold or relatively insensitive when it comes to the collectivistic society but they just cannot go ahead with it next is being empathetic and objective despite little to no similar experience so a counselor is one who is able to efficiently empathize with a person empathy is the first skill that i usually being uh, told to counselors that is to put yourself in another person's shoes and try to understand their concerns from that viewpoint so at times depending upon the nature of the concern it becomes very difficult for them to simultaneously be empathetic as well as objective right so for example if there is a person who wishes to seek uh, comfort from the counselor after having some physical harm over somebody 
after having inflicted physical harm over somebody, it would be difficult for the former to cater to the person's emotional requirements. But similarly, another challenge comes into picture when the people start questioning the counsellor's ability to understand what they're going through. Despite having experienced the same thing again and again and again, and there's no concrete proof for this, it kind of becomes an obstacle which is hindering the whole uh, counselling process. Now, what are the constraints? Uh, the other challenges. So this has been quoted by MacLeod. These are the challenges which are being faced by the councils, which are working in the organization. So those are in general, now these are in the organizations. For example, they are being pressured to produce results. So organizations usually say that we have employed you, now you're supposed to give us the results, right? Then maintaining confidentiality boundaries. What if like the organizations will start asking the client has told you, just tell us everything, we need to record it. This is not ethical, we cannot do it to the clients then justifying the cost of the service for example like we are paying you so much so we want this kind of a productivity to come out we want the absenteeism to lower down right then dealing with the isolation again a very important issue educating colleagues about the purpose and value of counseling there's so many people who are not having an understanding of this and they're not always very open about it as well so this is very important then justifying the cost of supervision as well right avoiding being overwhelmed by number of clients or becoming the conscience of the organization so yes overwhelm usually they they feel very overwhelmed whenever the clients are telling them about sensitive issues like getting abused getting harassed being discriminated so all these things does affect mental health and i don't think so anyone better than counselor can understand this who are being in this business of understanding it, treating it, and working on it. Avoiding the threat to reputation caused by failure cases. Coping with the envy of colleagues who are not able to take an hour for each client interview. Then creating an appropriate office space and a reception system. But it is difficult. Yes, it should be done. It should be, the counseling should be the part of the organization so that they'll never be considered as an outsider's. Now, how this thing can be handled, how all these challenges can be handled. So first is to get support from leadership. So one could identify and they can actually appoint mental wellness campaigns from business leadership. So who, I mean, like, you know, they'll be responsible for demystifying the stigmas which are there around the mental health. And they can share the importance of counseling. So when a support from the leadership will be there, it becomes easy. Then this can also help build a culture where professionals feel safe to share their struggles and seek support. And it is something which has been considered more acceptable, I would say. Then embed counseling as a key skill for new managers. So all newly promoted managers can be taught basic skills in counseling as it can help them reach out to their team members and take preventive interventions early on. For example, if there is a manager who observes that there is an increase in absenteeism, there is an increase in missing deadlines, there is lower quality of work which is coming up and there is increase of errors at work. So they can actually engage in a healthy conversation and they can seek support, professional support for that. Then employee network groups should be there and organizations should promote it. So these basically whenever uh, network groups are there, when self-help groups are there, so they basically create a kind of a safe space for the professionals. Because when there are professionals who are going through the same experiences, they might be coping out from it, they might have gone through a very severe turbulence phase, and they can actually share their experiences and resources, which will be very helpful for the people who are also part of the group. So for example, like simple meetup for coffees, or a quick 15 to 30 minute conversation, it helps substantially. And this is very true for women who might have pre apprehensions that, okay, they are re-entering the workforce after a gap, how it will be perceived. So the positive affirmations that they usually get from the employee networks, this can actually help in easing the anxiety. So it's a business imperative to weave the counseling as a tool, which is helping in making the leadership support in a positive manner around it. And it will definitely help in reducing the burnouts, the absenteeism, as well as the cost which are related to the turnover. Eventually, we need to view counselors as modern day business partners who can help in managing the stress more professionally and which will help in bringing personal and organizational changes. So stress and pressure, we, can, we cannot deny it. It is always there. It's a modern day reality of ours, but we can actually hope that through counseling, it can be helped. 
Now, what are the future developments in this area? So, workplace counseling will always remain an important resource for organizations. It offers employees a safe and a very confidential place to talk about anything which is confusing, which might be painful for them, which is not very comfortable for them, and it allows them to work in this area so that they'll have this confidence that, okay, there is one person who is listening to them non-judgmentally, empathetically, and secrets will never be out. So workplace counseling appears to work best in a face-to-face -face context. It should be employed. More organizations should work in this area. Uh, if it is not considered very wise to have a counselor, if it's not very cost-effective to have a counselor uh, employed over there regularly, they, the services should be like this. At least telephone option should be there. Then a measure of anonymity, they should work on this thing. The new technologies should be employed. Email counseling can be there. Instant messaging could be there. Online messaging, online counseling can be there. So as it becomes part of EAPs, of course, so uh, people are working in this area and post COVID, the major shift has been seen. So more people should come out and talk about it. More organizations should employ the stress, uh, the employee wellness programs, which should offer counseling you know, and which should promote counseling in a very positive manner. And in the coming years, the chances are that this positive change can be seen everywhere, easily in directions. Private sector are employing it. The public sectors are also about to employ it and some of them are working with it, so it should be there. In small businesses, there's a continuing demand of ad hoc counselors, so it is fine if the resources are not there, but this practice should be monitored very closely. So in the Wall Street Journal in 2016, it has been found that Indian millennials, they spend more time at their work than their counterparts in different countries, in 25 other countries. So an average of 52 hours a week, Indians are working in the organizations. And the fast pace and the stressful world that we are living in, it has led our employees to struggle with work-related stress. That is why counseling at this time is inevitable. It should be there. It is happening in the organizations abroad. They have counselors. They have contractuals also, they have regular also, and should be there in India as well. It has been seen that when life-altering decisions, for example, wedding, parenting, or any kind of caring for the elderly are to be made, it has been seen that Indian women are walking out of, or dropping out of work positions. The males are not uh, doing that, right? So in India, women are less likely to work than in any other country in the G20, except for Saudi Arabia. And in April 2017, a World Bank report found the sharpest workforce participation drops among both illiterate women and India's most educated women. What are dimensions that can be added to workplace counseling? Managers could be trained in some basic counseling skills so that you have external backup, that is not a problem. But in case the immediate requirement is there, then someone insider, an insider counselor should always be there. So managers should be trained in the basic counseling skills so that in case of emergency, the skills and expertise could be used. Then some growth and development workshops can be conducted. Regularly, it should be conducted in the area of communication skills, in the area of emotional intelligence, in, in the area of transactional analysis, etc., etc. Thank you so much. <music>